friends, my name is Alexis and I am live at the Civic Center for no other person than the beautiful actress. She is an entrepreneur and now an author. She comes up with this book that she calls A Toast to Life. I'm talking about no other person than Juliet Ibrahim. Seeing the attendance and a lot of people coming in today, whosoever came up with that idea or that statement that goes, Nigerians do not have a reading habit, I'm saying shame to that person. This is Senela Baden was TV. I'll bring you to you all the exciting moments, talking to our guests and of course having fun. Guess what? I advise you not to go anywhere because we're about to get started. At all time favorites. Okay, so the reason why I didn't go for a movie is because my life, I mean, I'm 33 years old. There's so much I can put in a movie. That means it's going to be season one to season 33. <laughs> you know how it is. So instead of it being that long, um, I, I needed to just do something small. A memoir is kind of like pieces of my life that I want to share with the public. So I put it together, uh, spent time writing and at least choosing the right topics to put inside, you know, and let people into my personal space. And uh, I did that. But I'm actually open to the idea of doing a movie if I can get like a right uh, sponsor or like investor that wants to do this project. I will be very, very happy. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Lunch, and with me is the super energetic, like all time, every day, every time, all summer, all season, day, body, night, 24-7. You're the oh, entire. Oh, oh, my darling, I should ask you that question because I have been seeing you for the Oh, King Suni. <laughs> so tell me, what are you expecting tonight? This is actually a book reflecting on Juliet Brimes. Are you kidding me? First things first, I'm hosting the event tonight. I mean, Juliet came to my house on Saturday. I said, ah, this is what I'm doing, please. And you know, I knew about the book because... On her, um, for her birthday, she organized a getaway in South Africa. So we all went with the entire family, her sisters. And she spoke to me about the book and what she was trying to chronicle. And I said, brilliant. So in case you feel you've known Juliet, I feel this book would give you a different perspective of Juliet's vulnerability. She's a vulnerable woman, no doubt. She's a hopeless romantic, as you all know. But she's going to show us a lot. And you know, also, there is a part in the book that touched me the most. It wasn't even about the war she encountered, you know, moving from Liberia to, to Ivory Coast to Lebanon. Lebanon, they had war there, she came back. So, but it was the sexual assault and molestation that she went through. It takes a lot for a woman to open up, you know, about things that are very, like, you know, very fragile. It's a delicate subject matter. You don't want to go there. But then I can tell that she's a woman that has grown. She's an amazing force of nature. Juliet, eh? Ah! And Juliet, no, the rest. The passport Juliet carries, no empty pages. <laughs> Juliet can travel. I don't know where they used to pass. Now, nah, if she opens her passport, no on her face, that picture, please. <laughs> Back. How are you doing? I'm totally blessed. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you look, has anybody told you you look dashing, all shades of everything, black and white? My mirror. You are proud, but it's all right. Yeah, so, is that what you say? I'm thank you. Just, I'm priding. Yeah, so just say thank you. <laughs> so tell me, this 
book is actually a book launch that's actually revealing a lot in the life of Juliette Brahim. Yeah, how how is that for you? Like, for somebody to come up with such courage, how do you feel? Uh, basically, I know Juliette. Uh, she's a go getter, a very close friend, and uh, we discussed about this a while ago. Do you understand? And uh, I was like, busy kid. Do I know how much we travel? I know how much she's engaged here and there. We didn't really have time. Uh, when I finally saw the guy, this thing don't come to our life. Trust me, life. life is everything. Trust me. Uh, the one thing when there is life, there is hope. Do you understand? So, if somebody come up with a great idea about a book, close to life, make sure everything about that book is life. Tell us, if you're supposed to reflect on your life, the Zibai Bash Brothers, as she called it, A Toast to Life. You're supposed to write a book now. We have everything that happened with your experience. What would you call that book? Um, basically, mm. my journey so far. Oh, <laughs> 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 because it's, 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 it's a long journey. So it's my journey so far. It was very hard for me to choose a chapter to speak from, but or to read from, but I chose uh, an excerpt from chapter 7. Eugene called me frequently. At first, I did not quite understand what he wanted from me. I only took his calls out of respect for him and the relationship he had with my family. He would call and ask me about my life, what I wanted to do when I grew up, and all that. It was not long before he began to wire money to me. I still did not figure out what he wanted until he asked me to marry him. Nothing prepared me for when he asked the question out of the blue. His proposal was more of an offer, so I took time to think about it. If I married him, I had a chance of going to America, getting a green card and getting better opportunities to support my family. It was such a tempting offer. At that time, moving to America was a big deal. Every other day, one, of, one friend or relative would relocate to America and they would send us photos of themselves in fancy places, especially during winter. It was one of such pictures that further piqued my interest in modeling when I was younger. My cousin Nina was a model in America when I was a teenager. She was married and had a child. Her photos made those girls I fancied in magazines real. Because I knew her, I could imagine those models had families and little cousins like me. So at 18, I was faced with a choice of moving to America to marry a 42-year-old man or staying in Ghana to pursue a career I did not know I would succeed in. Thank you. So tell me, actually here out for Juliette Ibrahim, yeah? She has come up with this, you know, bold step, everything that's happened to her in a book. How is that for you? Um, it's amazing. It's amazing for an African woman to, you know, tell her truth and life, you know, and to tell everything that's happened to her in life. So it's amazing because it's not easy for a woman, a lady to come out and say some things because she's definitely going to be judged by people. So it's good because it's going to encourage a lot of young ladies to do the same. So looking, about her, looking back to her life, she's actually tagged this one, it toast to life. You're supposed to do the same, looking at your experiences and everything. What would you tag any book that will come out from you? Oh, when I title a book. Um, I'll write a book about money. Yeah. <laughs> Not actually about love, about money, yeah. Are you serious? Right. It's a lie. We are disappointed. Because, no, 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 because you have to make money to find love. Do you agree? No, you agree? I don't. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but it's fine. So now imagine we're making a toast to something. What would that be? Right now you're making a toast, what would that be? What right now. Money? No, no, no. Right now it's about um, Julia's book. So it's a toast to life and it's a toast to how we should have success and you know all the best in life. So yeah. I'm reading an excerpt from chapter one of a toast to life. Years later, when I asked my mom about this, she said she was not scared until she saw the look on the faces of those men when they saw me, Sonia, and my teenager aunt. The look had sent a shiver down her spine. The thought that they might want to rape us almost made her pass out. I was six and my aunt was in her late teens. My mom was sh still shielding my dad as she continued begging the rebels. The one she knew said, eh, it does not matter. 
if you don't move from your husband's front, we will dig potatoes here. My mom did not listen. Maybe she thought he would not do it. But he totally disregarded her and started shooting the ground in between her legs. She jumped up and down trying to avoid the bullets. Just then, a miracle happened. Because it was only a miracle that would have made the government jet bombers arrive at that exact time. The rebels, hearing the sound of the planes, ran, ran for cover. They covered our cars with green leaves and positioned themselves in the car, ready to defend themselves. We ran to a nearby plantain plantation to hide. The jet bomber arrived a few minutes later and hovered around the border briefly. The noise from the engine blocked out every other noise. Once the bomber left, my dad carried Nabil, took Sonia's hand, and we all ran towards the river. We left everything we packed in the car. At the border crossing, we saw some of our friends and distant relatives, and we all got into a canoe. The women sat while the men paddled the canoe. One minute we were sitting on the canoe, and I was wondering what it would be like in Ivory Coast. The next minute, people were screaming. Some people had fallen into the river, including my cousin. The men paddling kept shouting for us to remain seated. I do not now remember exactly how that accident happened, but it was the first time I saw death face to face. My cousin drowned. Everyone was crying as we arrived at the shore on the Ivory Coast side. So guys, we're still on the black carpet of the book launch and I have with me one guy that is trending on social media right now. The one and only that put the stunt. You know, I, I, I see you doing. I'm good, I'm good. Do you know you're actually trending right now? I don't know. Pretend that you don't know. No idea. Continue with the introduction. No, no, it's okay. It's okay. Stop don't it. leave it like that. Even as pride, he said I should shut up my mouth. Just, no, just please, in the name of God, <laughs> let's just leave it like that. Leave it like yeah, let, so let's not loud it. Yeah. It's already loud enough, loud enough on a high key. <laughs> so let's leave it like that. Is it okay? We're well, here for the book launch of Juliette Ibrahim. Actually, coming up to tell us a lot of things about her life, her journey so far. Yeah, which actually a bold step. How do you see that? Um, I think it's a it's a step in the right direction. Uh, Juliet. Is quite experienced. She's been in the industry for a while, so I'm sure that you know quite a few things that we know, or that she knows that we don't know. So, so um, you know, she she wants to let us know. So at the end of the day, man, I can't wait to you know hear and and read what she you know what she has to talk about because I know it's a tell all book. So there might you know there might be a few juicy gist, maybe in that book. So I want to I want to dive in and know what's going on. But congrats, girl. That's my girl. Man. That's what. Talking about your life so far, you're supposed to write a book on everything that you've been through. What would be the title of that book? The journey so far. Everybody keeps saying journey. Just be precise. Maybe just something. Not you know elevation or something. <laughs> yeah, something like that. If I were to write a book, which I may not, I rather I rather tell my story on a song, you know, or an album. Stuff like that, but I don't think I don't think I'm gonna write a book now. Nah. Probably my girl will probably do that one because she likes to do all these, you know. <laughs> no women like to information, they like to put it. So she may want to do that, but I'm I'm not sure I'm, I'm gonna write a book. Her life experiences, I mean, it's something else. But that's it. We're here to support her physically, emotionally, and financially. And I like to do that with a sum of five hundred thousand. <laughs> They say, when big men, pretty much stand constantly. When big men like us, they talk. Chun Li, Chun Li, Chun Li. Eh? Chun Li. You see the reason why I call her? Chun Li. Please put your hands together for pretty much, please. Ask me. Pretty uh, man. Sorry, this is the that the big brother in Nigeria is kind of born. So, these ninjas here, they all quit because they keep them. <laughs> and they figure they rather roll with the superstar than you know. Uh, Woo! Oh, shit. <laughs> Is that 
finally encourages the world. It finally inspires the world. whatsoever, please join me as I pass the microphone to the ever-blazing, ever-industrious, ever-amazing, ever-supporting. He's very instrumental to my success story and to a lot of success stories that we might not know about. Please give it up, please, I beg of you, to the amazing. I, I call him a very bad sharp guy, Sir Chief Dele Momoto himself. He's going to tell us the reason for us being here. The reason why we're putting out this material. He's going to endorse this work of art. And at the same time, he even wrote a special excerpt in this book, which of course just goes a long way to show that he's ever, ever supporting. Thank you for being a support system any day, any time. Thank you. My Let's go. Thank you. Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Juliet, congratulations. Um, you won't believe it, I've had to stay around for nearly a week just to attend this event. Because I knew if I traveled, it might be impossible for me to come back. And I'm happy that I stayed. Um, let me start by saying Juliet is my very dear friend and she's my sister. I've known her now for so many years, but I didn't know any of these stories about her. Uh, listening to the stories, I'm shocked that she's still able to wear that permanent smile. Please, a big round of applause for her. Is it because we live with so much bitterness? Is it and it can only inflict deeper pain, injury, on the bitter. So I want to salute your courage that instead of being bitter, you decided to move on. And now that it is time to tell your story, you said it again without bitterness. And I think that is the lesson we should all take from this book. Uh, everyone spoke about you and your family. I run into you every now and then at airports or on aircrafts. Always a mom or sisters or siblings. I want to thank you for that. Because a lot of people, when they get big, they forget where they are coming from. And I look forward to reading your book. We support it. Morally and financially. <laughs> yes, she deserves it. Is it. She has shown that beauty is not just everything. She would have stopped at that. Enjoy her life. She's very beautiful. But I've been very impressed with your trajectory. She's been moving slowly but surely and steadily. And I'm very sure that tonight, even the angels in heaven are proud of you. Yes. Finally, what blew my mind about her is I knew when she started, she opened a business in Ghana. 
Then she went into acting. Then I saw her on stage. Uh, the football thing, the glow calf awards. Then I said, I dove my hand. You deserve an ovation. Please, a big ovation for her. Thank you very much, sir. Julius was one of the ushers that was even stationed at the entrance. Not inside, though. Stationed at the entrance, wearing some very Ankara outfit that was tight to the core. And then, you know, she was one welcoming guest. Just, and then, you know, when you post and see one find it, ah, who are you? Yes, but then, you know, she's just standing there. She's not coming inside. And then, and then, fast forward, like Sabodi said, a trajectory. Fast forward to a decade after, and this woman is not a guest. She is not an award presenter. She is not a red carpet delight. She is not even a red carpet host. She is not a black holder. She is, pardon my French, the freaking host. The hostess with the most text. And she smashed it. And then she now gave us her multilingual skills. Juju. Can you just tell people how many languages you can? I speak and read, read and write French because I grew up in Ivory Coast. And um, I went to school to learn Spanish. I love the language. I think it's very exotic. You too. You too, bien. <laughs> so, um, then Arabic at some point. But when you read the book, you understand what happened to the Arabic skills. <laughs> yeah. And then the local languages. I'm learning Yoruba, Igbo, Hausa. Yes, guys, we're still at the book club, Juliette Bryan book club, titled A Toast to Life. And I have with me a brown skinned, colored, is it brown skinned, colored? The dress is the top is brown skinned, but there's a brown skin somewhere around. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. How excited are you to be here today? Well, I'm excited though. I'm really excited because um, Juliette is a very close friend. So doing this and coming out to support us is a good thing. So, The Toast to Life is actually a book that's actually about her life. If you're supposed to, you know, put up a book about your life, what would that book be titled? What would it be titled? Um, Looking at your life, way back, like, what's the title of that book? The title should be The Journey. <laughs> the Journey. Yeah, because life basically is a journey, so whether good or bad, it's still going to be a journey. Because no matter what it, what has happened in between or along the time of that journey, it's still a journey. Talking about reading because we're actually at a book launch, what's the last thing you read on social media that actually caught your attention? Social media, what well, right. Okay, uh, I'm trying to remember. Um, yeah, yeah, because I actually wrote something okay. last night about priorities and options. So always place your priority above your options. So guys, we're still on the black carpet and I have with me one of the amazing guests at this book launch. No other person than Noble Eagle, always giving us hot, hot, as in, you don't need tired. Uh, so this is my, I am tired. You tired. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to say. This is just me like, oh, let me just wear white. I know because Gillette, Gillette, Gillette said a touch of gold. So like, let me just give them something good, just at the tip. You are proud. Thank you so much <laughs> for the kind words. <laughs> All right, I like proud people too. That's Thank you. I, I work hard to make sure that I don't go poor, so that way my <laughs> pride can stay stay at the top. I'm telling you. Yes. So, Juliette Bryan put up everything, if not everything that you need to know in this book about her life. How do you see that? Uh, it's encouraging, it's bold. And I do wish her all the best with everything that she's put in the book. And also wish her success with the book. Uh, it's not easy for someone to put together everything that I've been through into a book for other people to learn and to inspire to be better than she is. So I'm impressed. So imagine if you're supposed to name a book based on everything that has happened to you so far. Okay, he's thinking. <laughs> what would that be? Is that, am I supposed to do I have a book that everything happens? Name a book after everything that you've been through, like your life experiences. Yeah. What would that be? This is Nobs. <laughs> yeah. I, I thought you were proud of, and I like it. Thank you. So, are we expecting any This is Nobs anytime soon? Anyone? Are we expecting any This is Nobs anytime soon? 
Yes, I am. I, I plan to start working next year because a lot of people have been telling me to start writing. So I plan to write next year. So for free, legit, you said it here. You people should expect something like this. Is yes, yes, yes. And I mean, and if you don't get invited, it's not because I don't like you. It's not because it's not because we don't we don't we don't gel. <laughs> but we're going to be there. Yes, be I'm not saying about people who are watching. Well, yes, you'll be there. Okay. On behalf of Honorary Fan Buket Tiberi, NDCO, Diaspora Commission, we have done a private pledge to Ms. Juliet. Toast to life. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. And we appeal to everybody to support her in this noble and strong reading of emotional or factual life story. It's the most great. Thank you. Thank you very much. To understand what's going on. You know, there's something happening in our society right now, and um, I'm so glad I'm here that Juliet is taking a lift. A lot of women need to be given this kind of platform to speak up. A lot of our men have failed the women in so many ways, both in actions and in work. And um, if we don't encourage them by being here, by supporting them to speak up, by giving them a platform to tell their story, trust me, the next generation of men that will be raised will be worse than what we have right now. So this truth that they're speaking across the board is very strong for our society to change. Women are trying to change the society, how we behave, how we act. And I want to tell you, Juliet, you know, when you told me you were going to have this event, I had to fly in. And I told you I would support you with everything in me. We need to support the woman. It's not a joke, you know, could laugh about some of the stuff in it. But the seriousness in it is very powerful. I know that men go through stuff too. But when a woman goes through these kind of stories and have the, the courage to put it down, we need to support with everything in us, to tell the story when we live here. You know, people say, oh, he went to a red carpet event. It's not a red carpet event. It's a, a life-changing event for a lot of young girls and women out there. There's so many women that have stories. I mean, the statistics says over 75 women in Nigeria have been raped one time. And these are facts. Most of them don't have the courage to tell you, but when they do have that courage to speak, the odds is now on us to make sure that we believe their truth. I don't think with what Juliet has achieved in her life, with all the hiccups, that she will make up stories. You know, what happened about three, four weeks ago, they say, oh, somebody was making up a story, um, Beauty was making up, and I'm looking, why will somebody make up that kind of story? I'd rather make up a story about me owning a car that I don't own, than make up a story about somebody raping me. It doesn't make any sense. So to you, Juliet, I just want you to know that you have 100% support of me and everybody that has anything to do with me. And I'll keep encouraging every woman to keep having that chance to speak your truth. It's changing the way our men behave in Nigeria. Thank you. All right, sir. All right, sir. Uh, three, let's go straight. I can't talk three. Yes. So remember, it's host to live by Julius Ibrahim. Don't forget that. Are we ready? Kissy Brown, where are you giving the cat? Cha-cha! At the count of three. Are we ready? Let's do this. One, two, and the last digit is three!
Come on, Usher. Usher, can you stop? Can you hear them now? Usher, are you doing your work? Do it Do it by. All right, sir. Please, don't just carry the book on the Friday. It's a toast to life. It's a toast to life. Ladies and gentlemen, remember the reason why we're here tonight? We're celebrating Julia Tupac and myself. And then, of course, let's not forget, this is a very serious story, very in-depth, very profound. Coming from Julia herself, we need you all to pledge to this cause. 10,000 naira, one copy, ushers. Where are you? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Readers and leaders. And, uh, you know, I've learned a lot of things through reading. And I would like, um, I think I want about maybe 500 pieces of this book to be taken to um, different universities around the states of Nigeria so we can educate all the women, on um, all our young women coming up on um, what it is to be a true woman. So 500 um, pieces of the book, copies of the book, which about 500 now. Thank you. I like to buy 15 pieces, copies of this book uh, at the cost of 500,000 euros. Please, put your I know if I had invited so many of more people, they would have been here as well. So um, it's exactly how I envisioned the launch to be. And when they started reading from um, the book, I was nervous because I'm like, oh my god, is that how it sounds? There's someone who's reading it because I actually haven't listened to anyone else read. I've read it myself over and over again to criticize myself. But now it's out there. You're all going to read um, and get into my personal space. Don't judge me. <laughs> Don't feel sorry for me. I've actually gone through everything I've gone through um, and made it to be like my strong um, force, driving force in life. I've been able to be better than I was before. And my own competition now always be that I could go on and on, but I would like to say thank you very much. So guys, that's all that we bring to you right here from Juliet Ibrahim Books Launch. Ladies and gentlemen, it makes me wonder whosoever came up with that idea that Nigerians do not read Surely that statement needs to be reversed. The love oozing right here was amazing. This book is quite insightful. She came out pouring a lot, which is quite emotional. Ladies and gentlemen, I advise that you should go and get that book. If you want to know what it means to actually move from a certain point to another point in life. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Alex and I had so much fun doing this with you. Do remember, this is another Bad Moss TV. Do like, share and subscribe to our YouTube channel. So like, call me away next time. Say bye for now.